All right, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, today. Thanks to those of you who've joined us. Uh, I'm sure uh, all those of you who are classroom teachers or work in schools uh, today probably had a long day. So uh, glad you could carve out a little bit of time to join us and kind of talk about uh, utilizing the standards view. Um, so we're going to spend the next 30 minutes uh, or so just kind of doing a deep dive on that and what you can do with it. Uh, as a reminder, for those of you uh, those of you joining us today, you will receive a follow up email with a copy of the slide deck that includes any active links uh, and also a copy of the video recording for your reference. Uh, we have a small group today, so uh, feel free to uh, share your video uh, and. If uh, when we get to question portions, if you want to unmute and share your questions, you can do that or you can post those in the chat. Um, and so I'm Brian Story. Uh, I'm uh, it's actually uh, an outdated uh, title slide here. I'm the director of teacher engagement. Uh, so uh, I'm responsible for uh, working with our team, uh, our program team to sort of design all the PD and uh, learning opportunities for our teachers. Uh, as a note on today's deep dive, uh, we're assuming some basic knowledge of assessments, including how to create your account and log into assessments, uh, how to find and assign problems to your students, uh, how to interpret and analyze the problems view of the assignment report. Uh, so, uh, the, which is sort of just the basic view of the assignment report data. Uh, and you can feel free to check out our new user parts one and two webinar recordings, which cover all of that information. Or if you have a more specific question today, uh, you know, you can feel free to share those uh, when we get to uh, time for questions and I'll do my best to respond. So I wanted to start with uh, just having folks share in the chat. How do you currently decide which students need additional support with specific standards? And so I'll give folks about 60 seconds. Uh, you can share in the chat, or like I said, you can unmute and share loud as well. While you are thinking about that, I'm noticing we're very heavy on the West Coast today. Uh, looks like we have Washington, uh, California, uh, and then we have uh, uh, the Midwest with uh, Wisconsin represented. So happy all of y'all could join me from around the country. Uh, thanks Aurelia for sharing uh, your thoughts. So you use uh, various methods for formative assessment. Anybody else, when you, uh, when you decide, or how do you decide, or what data do you use uh, to determine which students need uh, support with specific standards as you progress through the year? Um, Thank you, Carrie. Uh, she shared uh, cool downs, unit assessments, and iReady data. Excellent. And Carrie, uh, would you mind unmuting, just sharing which curriculum you use? Well, she might not be in a position to uh, unmute and share a lot, but feel free to share in the chat. Uh, so um, we're gonna go ahead and keep it moving here. Our goal is to understand how the standards view of the assignment report can support student learning. And so uh, along those lines, we're gonna spend some time just talking about understanding the standards view uh, and then taking action based on the standards view uh, before we wrap up today. Uh, oh, thank you, Carrie. So Carrie uh, works, uh, uses the illustrative mathematics curriculum, excellent. Uh, and I want to go ahead and do a poll uh, before we start talking specifically about the standards uh, view. Uh, so I'm just going to launch the poll. And the poll is just asking you, how familiar are you with the standards view currently? And we'll take about 60 seconds or so uh, to give folks a chance to answer. All right, looks like uh, everybody uh, finished already. So I'll go ahead and share the results there. Uh, it looks like 75% uh, of you uh, have seen but not used it. 
uh, and then one of you also shared uh, that you use it regularly. Um, so going to be very curious to see uh, from those who have seen but not used it if you have questions uh, as we go through today. And then uh, for the person who shared that they use it regularly, uh, would love for you to, uh, you know, take a moment if we have time uh, when we get to questions or toward the end, you can share what you do with it. Uh, I'm sure that would be uh, super useful to think about for the, those uh, in attendance. All right, so understanding the standards view. So we know that, uh, you know, schools obviously message the importance of standards depending on what school you're at. Uh, you know, administrators or instructional leads require teachers to adhere very closely to standards. Uh, but uh, how do you operationalize that in a way that's meaningful for you and your students and that drives uh, student growth, right? That's always the big question. And especially considering how limited your time is, uh, you know, you have to be able to leverage tools to kind of help you get there, right? Um, and so we've created uh, with the new version of assistments, we have the standards view uh, of the assignment report. Uh, so the way that you access this uh, in a normal assignment report, you're automatically taken to the problems view, uh, which will probably look familiar to everybody here. Uh, all you have to do is click the standards tab at the top, and that's going to take you into the standards view. And how is the standards view different? Uh, it includes the progress cards uh, at the top, the same, uh, the same as the sort of problems view that you would see. Uh, but then instead of the detailed view with the breakdown of each question uh, <clears throat> for each student, uh, you have uh, the scores broken down by standard. <clears throat> and so student overall averages that you'll see in the standards view are the same as what you'd see in the problems view of the assignment report. But student averages on each standard are calculated by averaging their scores on the problems tagged with that standard uh, as it's represented in the problem set. So you can see here uh, for each of these standards, uh, there's one question in the problem set, except for 7GA1, which has two questions in the problem set. Uh, so that will tell you what standards are addressed in the problem set and the number of problems uh, that uh, are represent or that represent each standard. Uh, I wanted to take a moment uh, and give you a chance to actually look at some data. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, and, and this will look a little bit messy, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just uh, going to share in the chat uh, a PDF of the standards view. And I want folks to share either uh, by unmuting and sharing aloud, or you can share in the chat. Um, which standard uh, would you focus on uh, based on what you see? And uh, what, who is one student you would focus on for additional support? Uh, so I'm going to pop that link in the chat. And I'll give folks about uh, 60 seconds or so just to take a look at this report. Uh, it's a PDF. You can zoom in if you like. Uh, feel free to let me know if you have questions, and we'll come back together in about 60 seconds. All right, uh, feel free to take about 15 more seconds. And while uh, you're still thinking, I'm just gonna switch over here to uh, the standards view of this report.
All right. Um, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Uh, you can feel free to unmute or share in the chat. Uh, which standard uh, would you focus on for uh, for intervention uh, per se? And uh, what what's an example of a student that you might um, uh, that you might want to uh, target specifically for additional support? All right. Uh, well, uh, I do appreciate it if anybody's willing to share. Uh, if you're not, no worries. Uh, oh, we have someone coming in the chat. All right. Uh, so Aurelia said student A. And so if we look at student A, uh, you can see across the board, they got a zero average uh, and uh, scored a zero on each standard. So the problems on each standard, they, they uh, scored a zero on. So that's definitely concerning. Uh, great example. Um, and then uh, standard uh, 6RPA3A, uh, so this last one on the end. Uh, and one thing you can't do in the PDF that I'll do here is sort of sort it. So you can definitely see that the majority of students uh, were not able to answer that question correctly. Very good. And then Carrie shared, uh, it looks like the problem that was missed most by everyone was 7GA1, that's right. So uh, for 7GA1, you can see uh, even fewer students were able to answer that correctly uh, in general and just on the first try. So if I were as a teacher trying to determine uh, of these four standards, I have a very limited amount of time, what can I uh, do to target instruction? I'm gonna focus on 7GA1 and 6RPA3A. Uh, uh, so it helps you to kind of narrow down your focus. And then uh, as was mentioned, student A, so that student in particular probably needs a little extra support, maybe some one-on-one -on -one time. So you've already figured out what you want to uh, what you want to reteach or what standards you want to reteach on, and a student that you want to target for an intervention. And that took about sixty seconds. Uh, once you get used to this report, it takes even less time. And so uh, again, the idea is that teachers don't have a lot of time to do these things that they're being told they should be doing all the time. We want to make that easier uh, for you to do. Uh, Carrie also mentioned student G. Uh, absolutely. So another student uh, that scored uh, zeros across the board. Um, and so uh, can someone share an example of if they have a bunch of students, maybe not all students, maybe maybe half the students clearly demonstrated they don't understand what's something that you would do in your classroom. And you can share in the chat or unmute and share aloud. So again, you uh, you know you might have a standard where half of the students in the class demonstrate mastery, uh, and the other half of the students are just not quite there yet. So what would you do? Uh, it's a situation that we face all the time with students. Uh, Carrie shared uh, half students who got it correct share a starting point or how they solve the problem. Absolutely. Uh, and relying on those uh, really good exemplars of what to do and what not to do can be super helpful. Uh, so you could definitely start there. Uh, one other interesting thing to notice here is, I mean, you've got this group of students who, uh, you know, they did pretty consistently well across the board. You might uh, decide to group those students individually with uh, small groups of students that struggled and have them do a reteaching session with them. Uh, putting students in the driver's seat and especially explaining why. So saying, hey, look at the standards report, guys uh, and gals. Um, you know, I noticed that we struggled the most on these two standards, but we had uh, students X, Y, and Z who did really well. So we're going to do a reteaching session where uh, you break off into groups and each one of those students is going to uh, help you understand the concept and you're going to try some more problems, right? So uh, that's, those sort of um, moves are going to help them see, A, you're using their data to drive your instruction, B, you have the confidence in them to center uh, them and their ability to problem solve, even if they're not quite getting it. 
uh, by working together. And so that's, again, going to build that positive mindset, growth mindset, uh, willingness to persevere through difficult content. <clears throat> All right, I'll pause here just to see if folks have any questions. Uh, the standards report itself is pretty simple, but uh, do you wanna give you uh, a chance to ask any questions which you can share in the chat or you can share aloud? I'll wait a few more seconds. I like to do the same thing with uh, with my fellow educators as I did with the students and give wait time. Sometimes it takes a moment for questions to bubble up. And if there aren't any questions, I'll take that to mean I've been super clear so far and we can go ahead and move on. Uh, so no problem there. Uh, oh, and I did want to point out uh, in the deck, which again, you'll get a copy of the deck, I've linked to our uh, explainer on how the standards view of the assignment report works. Uh, so our user resource on that, so that you can check that out as a refresher anytime you need. Um, and it looks like, okay, Carrie shared a question. Can you see the standards in the assignments from the curriculum assignment or problem sets? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, in that regard, uh, we recommend using the resources that you have uh, for your curriculum. So that's probably going to show you the sort of lay out the standards alignment in that way. Uh, if you're curious about what's being addressed in any one problem set from, say, Illustrative or Eureka, uh, et cetera. And then I do think, um, let me see here. Do a little search just to just to double check and make sure. Yeah, so uh, you won't see the specific standards here, but you should be able to see them in your aligned materials, uh, whether you have uh, the te the physical teacher uh, curriculum guide or you use the online materials. Any other questions? Alrighty, uh, so moving right along. Uh, now that we've kind of gone over what the standards report uh, is and how it works and what it does, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about taking action based on the standards report. So I already had a few folks share and kind of get the juices flowing on uh, how you might respond to the data that we looked at in the standards report. Uh, we now have a couple recommendations that might be useful to you as well. Uh, one action that you can take is assigning to a subset of a class. So uh, if we go back to that report, and I probably should have just stayed there, uh, and we notice that uh, the standard uh, where the students did uh, or had the most challenge was 7GA1. Uh, so I might decide uh, to go up here and search for, stand search for standard 7GA1, uh, and that'll pop up scale drawings. And uh, searching for that standard is going to show me every problem. We have 475 aligned to that standard. Uh, and it's also going to show me uh, the skill builders aligned to that standard, where it appears we have actually uh, six different ones. Uh, or at least, yeah, okay, so there are at least three of those that align to this specific standard. Uh, so you can either decide to, to you know, do some reteaching uh, or have them do those student groups uh, for reteaching and then assign some new problems aligned to that standard. Uh, or you could assign the entire class a skill builder uh, for those higher uh, those students who are doing better on that standard. It'll help to build that fluency and, and uh, consistency for the students that were struggling. This will give them a chance uh, now that they've had reteaching to demonstrate knowledge and get a little extra practice. Oh, and of course, I uh, completely skipped over the part uh, that I wanted to show you. I got too excited. So uh, if I let's say uh, I've done the students have done that reteaching session and I want to assign just to a few students uh, uh, that struggled so that they can get some extra practice. Um, I can select problems here and uh, click assign to class. 
and uh, let's just say uh, for the purpose of this activity, I'm just going to call it review. Uh, and once I've chosen my class, I can then select the specific students. So I'll uncheck select all students. And then uh, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, one student that was struggling was student A. So let's say I just want to send uh, these problems to that student. Uh, and then I can go and assign the class and the student, uh, only that student will see the assignment, no other students will see it. Uh, so you can literally target who gets what kind of practice from assistance <clears throat> and it doesn't cause any kind of extra assignments or confusion in Google Classroom or Canvas. And I've also included a resource here uh, that includes all that information about how you can assign to a subset of a class. Uh, so I kind of skipped over that, went to action two, which is skill builders. So you can use those skill builders to provide mastery based practice on a specific skill or standard. Uh, like I said, when you search by standard, it's automatically going to show you both the problems that we have aligned to that standard and also the skill builders that we have aligned to that standard. Uh, so when you look at those skill builders, uh, you can click the one that you want to go to. Notice that you're not going to be able to select problems because students receive problems randomly and you can go and assign that. Uh, also, just for uh, clarity's sake here, uh, you can also go to the find and assign screen in the content library and browse through the skill builder folders by uh, grade level or content area. So whichever you prefer, the search function or uh, the, fol the folder in the content library. And I've also included a resource here about uh, skill builders and how those work, just in case you're curious. Action three is creating a custom problem set using search by standard. So uh, you may decide that you want to address, uh, and I'm going to go back here just for a moment uh, to that assignment report. And you, let's say you want to make a custom problem set that addresses both 6RPA3A uh, and 7GA1. Uh, so I'm just going to jot those down really quickly. 6R. And uh, I'm going to go to find and assign, and I'll go back to those uh, problems that I was looking for, uh, for seven, or looking at for 7GA1. And let's say uh, I want to pick. Uh, just these first two problems to go in my problem set. Instead of clicking assign to class, I'll click that drop down, save to my problem sets. And then uh, I'll just call this um, targeted standards review. And I'll click create and save to problem set. And now uh, if I let's say I want to search for some problems aligned to 6RPA3A, uh, I can type that in. Oh, gotta spell it right. There we have that. So I'll pull that standard up. Ooh, for this one, we have 500 problems. Uh, so let's say uh, I just want to add the first two from here to that problem set we just created. I'll select those and then save to my problem sets. And I'll just search for the name of that problem set, save uh, those problems to it. You can click view problem set right here just to see that problem set you've created. Uh, and you can also, uh, from this screen, if you wanna reorder the problem, so move problems up or down, uh, you can do that as well. And you can always access that assignment again by going to my problem sets uh, and you can see it right there. All right, and I included a few resources on how to create those custom problem sets and again, searching by standard uh, so that you can access those user resources that we provide uh, whenever it's convenient to you. So I want to uh, now that we've kind of gone through the information uh, here and I've shared some actions that you can take uh, with the standards view, uh, I want to go ahead and do a poll. Uh, which of these actions that I shared feels most relevant to your teacher practice as you consider how to respond to data in the standards view of your assignment reports? And remember, the actions that we went over were assigning to a subset of a class, assigning skill builders, and creating custom problem sets with search by standard. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and launch that poll. 
and I'll give folks about 60 seconds or whenever everybody's finished. All right, interesting. Uh, so it looks like uh, half of you chose uh, assigning to a subset of a class uh, and half of you chose creating custom problem sets with search by standard. Uh, I was wondering if someone would mind either sharing aloud or sharing in the chat uh, an example uh, where uh, you know this feature would be useful in your class uh, or even a recent situation in which uh, it would have been helpful to use one of these features. Uh, I'll give folks a, a few seconds to sort of uh, think about that uh, and feel free to share in the chat or again you can unmute and share aloud. So think of a situation you could describe uh, could be recent uh, or just very memorable. Uh, and um, feel free to describe that in the chat or uh, share it aloud. All right, well, if, uh, okay, here we go, Carrie. Uh, so uh, Carrie said uh, she's supporting a variety of learners and intervention. Uh, so this is super helpful to know how to uh, target uh, the skill builders by standard. Uh, absolutely. We know that theoretically differentiation is supposed to involve no more than two to three grade bands per class. But we know that that is not what has to happen. Uh, I know for myself personally, uh, as a teacher in DC public schools, I had students uh, that ranged in uh, math and verbal skills from early elementary all the way to college in the same classes, right? And uh, so being able to quickly target standards and target those interventions at the subgroups of students that need them uh, in a very, very quick and efficient way is like a critical, critical thing. So absolutely. Oh, there was one more comment in there. I wanted to get that. Yeah, especially in middle school and high school level. We know, uh, and we know that for a, a lot of students, <laughs> many of the gaps in learning that happen sort of start to percolate in elementary school and just really uh, kind of go from there in middle school and high school. So oftentimes um, when you're teaching in later elementary or uh, middle or high school, you're trying to not just make sure they're learning the standards for that year or addressing learning loss from the previous year, but you're having to reach all the way back uh, and, and make sure that students have uh, you know the sort of basic foundations they need uh, to be successful. Uh, so, uh, and it's a, it's a challenge. So hopefully, hopefully, what we do with our tool, and as we add features like those I shared today, uh, and uh, continue to develop those features, that we can give you all some of those options uh, to serve all of your students, and uh, not just you know the top students or the middle students or uh, the low students or what have you. Uh, I'll go ahead and pause here for questions. And just based on where we are with time, you can feel free to leave those in the chat, uh, but we'll go ahead and just uh, wrap up here. So today we talked about understanding the standards view and taking action based on the standards view. Uh, in the chat, I'm going to share uh, a link to our feedback survey. Uh, we definitely use all teacher feedback uh, to decide how we make our sessions better. Uh, and um, one of the reasons why we decided to do these 30 minute deep dives was to give folks something that was a little bit less time intensive and more bite sized for those teachers with a busy schedule, uh, as an example. Uh, so please take about 30 to 60 seconds and just complete our uh, feedback survey uh, as we close out here. Uh, so today's focus was skill builders. If you want to learn more about the basics of using assessments or interpreting our data, you can check out our new user recordings uh, in the webinar library. We also have our other 30-minute deep dive recordings located there. 
Uh, and then we're really excited about our session coming up next week uh, on using assessments to support equity and inclusion. Uh, so we're going to hear from some of our teacher users and uh, share. Uh, I'll have a chance to sort of share and let folks digest our assessments equity framework. Uh, or equity teacher guide uh, so that um, they can uh, leverage assistance to support uh, an equitable classroom environment. Uh, you can always check out our user resources. Uh, as an example, if I just go over here to the website uh, and go to the help center and click on user resources, uh, some of the resources that we looked at today, uh, you can go to find and assign content. Uh, and you can see that assigning to a subset of a class, uh, which I shared in the deck, uh, is located here. Um, so uh, we have a lot of different resources that you can leverage, uh, from whether it's finding and assigning content, understanding those reports. Uh, and you can see here, uh, we have an overview of the problems view and standards view of the assignment report. Uh, so you can go there, uh, but lots of helpful resources uh, that you can leverage from our website, uh, again, from the help center up here. Uh, feel free to join our Facebook teacher user community. Uh, we're also on Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Uh, and if you have any follow-up questions or uh, need any help with anything at all, feel free to reach out to us at contact.assistance.org and we'll be more than happy uh, to help you out. Um, and then uh, that's basically it for the session. I'm gonna stay on uh, just to answer these questions. Uh, so if you don't have any questions, you can feel free to go. Uh, but the first question was, will we get the slides today? Uh, probably the slides will probably come to you uh, by tomorrow morning, uh, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, but if you have a more urgent need, feel free to pop that in the chat and I can, I'll see what I can do. Uh, and then uh, Aurelia asked, uh, how can we get the material you said we're going to have, uh, like the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the PW I shared? PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to send you that directly via email. You can share the links that uh, to the deck or the recording with anybody you like. So anybody will be able to access those. All right. Uh, so unless there are any other questions, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, taking your questions and appreciate those of you who shared in the chat uh, and, and taking the time to, to learn a little bit with us today. And I hope you'll have a great rest of your day. And again, feel free to reach out to us at contact at assistance. If you have any questions, uh, and I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Uh, and thank you.